Somebody once told me, and I don't remember who, but it's always stuck with me, always in my brain, that if you eat watermelon, it's like a natural Viagra. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Omaomi, aka Petit Diva. And this video is inspired by a particular question that a creator asked on TikTok. Now, this creator asked people to share what is the thing that someone has said to them, good or bad, um, that has stuck with them for years. Stitch this video and tell me, what is something someone has said to you, good or bad, that will stick with you forever? I'll go first. So my junior year of high school, I was literally the only girl who was not asked to prom. And I was super sad about it. I was hiding my emotions, but I felt very left out. And one day in class, the conversation came up and someone asked me, Lauren, why aren't you going to prom? And I didn't know what to say, so I was silent. And this jock of a football player sitting behind me looked at me and said, it's because she has no friends. And look at me now. 600,000 friends. I wonder what he's doing. Now in this video, the creator encouraged people to stitch a video and share what is that thing that someone has said to them, either good or bad, that has stuck with them for years and they feel like it to continue to stick with them. It's something that they will continue to remember. Now she shared her own um, story in which when she was in junior high school, um, everybody got asked to the prom she was the only one that did not get asked to the prom so she was not going to go to the prom and then one day someone asked that uh, why is she not going to the prom and a guy actually said that she's not going to the prom because she doesn't have any friends now she is now a big time tiktoker and um, and she was now saying that she has over 600,000 friends which are, are tiktok followers i believe at that point in time and she wonders how that guy is doing right now. Now, personally, there's something that someone said to me that, uh, years ago that I've continued to think about a lot, especially in the last six years. And I don't know if that person thought that it was a smart thing for that person to say to me, but it um it it made me it made me feel a particular kind of way when he was said, and it has made me feel a particular kind of way for years and to now and i think i will continue to think about it um regularly um but before i share what that is um i would love to hear your own um story um what has someone said to you um that has stuck with you either good or bad and i think about regularly um i would love to hear your own story so please leave your comment in the comment section and let's check out other people's story then i'll come back to share my own um story something someone has said to you good or bad that will stick with you forever okay so when i was in seventh grade i was very awkward and i came home from school one day and nobody was home and then my sister's friend showed up that was like six years older than me and she showed up to wait for my sister. She could tell something was wrong with me. And she said, hey, what's wrong? And we sat at the table. And I told her that this girl that I asked out, like, laughed in my face. And she, in an attempt to make me feel better, very blunt person, she was like, listen, Brad, you know, right now, you know, you're awkward and this, that, and other. But when you get older, you're a sweet guy and girls are going to be all over you. But right now, all they care about is good looks and charisma, you know? And I was like, thank you. I know now what she was saying. It was very sweet. Then I was like, fuck you. That will stick with you for. My three friends and I were getting ready to leave for college for the first time and we stopped to see a friend of the family who is currently dying of cancer. We sat down and over coffee he asked about our hopes, our dreams, and our plans for the future. The friends I was traveling with came from wealthier families whose parents had been to college before and their answers about what they wanted to do in the future were much clearer than mine. And so Ralph, the one who was dying from cancer, pulled me aside to chat with me one on one. He said, there's something I've been learning that I think will be really helpful in your future. He said, because it's so obvious you don't have what they have, you're going to have to get very good at knowing what you do have. He said, the shortcomings that we find in life can be super unfair and seem overwhelming. And worrying about that unfairness makes it hard to see what you do have. 
And he said, if you can't see what you do have, you're taking for granted what I don't have. That will stick with you forever. I was talking on the phone with this guy that I had met on Bumble. And he asked me about the last guy I dated. And I was like, oh, I actually got ghosted and it really sucked. And he's like, why do you care? And I was like, well, I got, I got ghosted. It hurt my feelings. Like, do, doesn't it bother you when you get ghosted? And he was like, no, I don't care. And I was like, how can you not care? He's like, there's another bus in 10 minutes. <laughs> oh my God, I loved it. It was so great that he said that. I, I think it will stick with me forever. There's another bus in 10 minutes. I didn't end up going out with that guy though because he went crazy, but I'm happy he said that one thing. That will stick with you forever. When I was a much younger first time manager, I remember asking my boss to give me feedback and I wanted to become better in my job. And she said, you come across as too businessy. What I didn't know at the time was that I should have asked her for clarification on what she meant. Many, many years later, I still reflect on that and think about how to best give effective feedback in the workplace. Now that I work in organizational development, I know that what she was saying was an opinion on my personality. Just think about it. If somebody gave you that same exact feedback, would you know what to change? Would you know what behaviors to do differently? If you are a manager, the best thing that you can do when you're giving feedback to your team is to be very specific and measurable. Stitch this video and tell me, what is something someone has said to you, good or bad? These nuts. Sorry, I have no friends. <laughs> that will stick with you forever. This was probably about 10 years ago. I was hanging out with my aunt and uncle in Georgia. And my uncle went upstairs to go do something. So I asked my aunt, like, how do you guys have such an amazing relationship? And her response was, if it doesn't matter in 10 years, why fight about it? Why worry about it? She said that they have their, they live the relationship based on that. Uh, and that slapped me in the face. Uh, that was before I had met my wife I had been in a couple relationships but that moment I started trying to live through that um, if it's not gonna matter in 10 years well I'll worry about it that will stick with you forever okay so it was like my second year in the classroom I had a couple of students who were buddies but they were also like what you would say partners in crime they weren't always the best of students, but you know, they would try hard occasionally and you know, do their thing. Well, over a couple weeks, one of them stopped showing up to school, like missed, I think almost every day for like two weeks. Finally, I was taking a roll and I was like, hey, has anybody seen him? Anybody know where he is? Is he okay? And one of the kids in class was like, oh yeah, he quit showing up. He's done, he's quitting. I was like, oh man, that's, that stinks. And that's whenever his buddy said something super profound. He chimed in and just said, that's on him. And you know, I sat there for a second and I thought, you know what? It is on him. There's not a lot we can control in this world. However, something I tell my kids all the time is you can't control anyone else, but you know who you can control? Yourself. So how we act, how we respond, what we do, that's on us. That's the most profound thing I learned from a kid who made straight D's in my class. Dad, that will stick with you forever. All right, I love this question. So for me, hands down, about four years ago, I was relatively new at, at YouTube and speaking, and I get this email. Uh, from a Hollywood producer, now a friend of mine named Rod. He says, I watch your channel. I have a speech coming up. Will you help me write it? And I'm like, absolutely. Right? So he flies to Florida. And uh, we talk about it at the end of the conversation. He's like, so how much is this going to cost me? And of course, I'm like, I don't care. Right? It's like, I, I'm just so excited to be a part of it. I don't really care about the, the money. And I'll never forget this. He looks at me and he's like, Eddie, be a salesman. He's like, if you don't set standards, no one's going to set them for you. He takes out a check wrote it for more than I've ever made on a project at that point, pointed to it and says, how about this number? You're never worth less than this. And uh, don't get me wrong, the money was great, but I left with this understanding that, that the world won't believe it until I do. And, and that's changed my life. I'll be forever grateful for that. To you, good or bad. Don't quit your day job. They're right. You, good or bad. It's always told. You're never going to do anything with your life. You're never going to accomplish anything all because of where I was from, which, like, which end of town. Well, guess what? Oh, I might be from that end of town that does 
or will never make anything of themselves. But I've done pretty good for myself. 12 years in the military. Started a, a successful pro wrestling company. A DJ business. Yeah, there was some struggles along the way. But guess what? Everything that people tell me I can't do, I adapt, I overcome. And like I was told when I struggled, you know, was struggling real bad with addiction, I went to rehab, be so positive, negative people don't want to be around you. What is something someone has said to you, good or bad, that will stick with you forever? It's the statement. You're exactly where you're meant to be. That's it. Just remember that you're exactly where you're meant to be. That will stick with you. So I recently had this conversation with my godmom. And she was like, well, something about a song, you know, to the window, to the wall. So let me tell you how in my head, I have been thinking my entire life that they over there are like, you know, from the window to the wall. And yes, the song says to drip drops down my balls. I thought they was just dancing so hard. And then, because we got on the conversation, because my godmom is, you know, where is Keith? And I'm like, I'm thinking that's just a sound effect. And she's like, no, it means, and I'm like, does it? I'm thinking he just having fun. Skeet, 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 skeet. No. Nah. So, yeah, that will be forever in my head now. That will stick with you. That they were sick of me being sad and depressed all the time. And they needed their strong friend back right after I left my husband. That will stick with you forever. That's easy. When my husband decided to leave, for no reason. We still, I mean, I, I'll never know why he left. I don't know if it was another woman. I don't know. He was an odd character anyway. He finds a picture of me that I took when I was like in my 35. Like I was, I was in my 30s. I was in like 35 or something like that. Now I'm almost 50. And he turns it over and he writes on the back. He says, you looked this good for every man except for me. But I, was, but I will still always love you, and my door will be open for you to come back to me one day. What? You're leaving me for whatever reason. And then you're going to punch me in the throat because you know I was very um, uncomfortable with my weight. You knew it was bothering me. So you punch me in the throat on the way out. And then you leave a note to say, yes, I'm hurting you and I'm leaving you and I'm not giving you a, 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 justi a justifiable reason why, but my door's open. I don't know. I don't know if he was doing it to, for, so I would chase him. I don't know. But that right there will stick with me for the rest of my life. <coughs> I have never had a man say something. Now, that's one thing I ain't never had trouble with. A man ain't never told me I wasn't attractive. That I was with. Now, I'm sure there's men out there that's not going to find me attractive. I'm talking about a man that was with me has never made me feel unattractive. But this one. Now, mind you, when he left, I was embarrassed. And I was humiliated. Because he, oh my God, he poured it on so damn thick. I just, I mean... He had everybody fooled. And since he's been gone, honey, I have found out so much. It's amazing. I should have talked to all these women that he was with before I married him. But, you know, I've never made good decisions when it comes to men. But, um, yeah, that will stick with me forever. I'll be like, I mean, he, you know, self-esteem, you know, women work very hard to get their self-esteem and then, if single-handedly one guy can just come and just knock you off your feet, and you're like, you know, God, do I look that bad? I mean, yeah, it, it, that that would be the one thing right there. That will stick with you forever. Never love somebody more than they love you. And I know that might sound like a little bit fucked up, uh, but my dad told me that um, very, very long time ago, many years ago, um, because I am a person that... I tend to give a lot of love and I guess sometimes I tend to give it to the wrong people because it's never been mutual. And I guess I learned that the hard way by getting burned in basically every single relationship that I've ever been in. Like I said, he told me this many years ago, but 
I think now in my 20s, I've really started to develop a true understanding of it way more. And like I said, sounds a little bit messed up. But if you're a person that worries about getting burned and has been, then it makes a lot of sense, unfortunately. Good or bad, that will stick with you forever. That people would overbite shit and smile because it's disgusting. Yeah. If you're gonna be a horse trainer, don't own a bunch of horses. Hmm. How many is considered a bunch? Good or bad, that will stick with you forever. I was told you can learn a lot from your enemies and that herpes is forever. That will stick with you forever. I'm sorry. I love you. That will stick with you forever. Somebody once told me, and I don't remember who, but it's always stuck with me, always in my brain, that if you eat watermelon, it's like a natural Viagra. So you just eat a bunch of watermelon and you'll just have a raging, you know. And I don't know if it's true. I've never fact checked it, but it's always stuck with me. And anytime I see anyone eating a watermelon, I hit him with a fun fact. I don't even know if it's a fun fact. I don't even know if it's a fact. But uh, I guess I should start trying it out. So like for part two, <laughs> don't like for part, I'm not doing. That will stick with you forever. So when I had my first daughter, this is my second, um, my sister-in-law, who has my nephew who's a few years older, um, saw me just drowning in motherhood and she gave me the best piece of advice, the best piece of parenting advice anyone has ever given me. She just said to remember everything is a phase. Not saying the next phase is better, not saying the next phase is worse, but just know when you think you're at the end of your wits and you can't handle it anymore, just know deep down that it is a phase and you will get through it. And that has saved me numerous times. And just knowing that this too shall pass, which is, yes, it's a phase. Now, I loved what that guy's auntie told him about letting go of things and that if it's not going to matter in the next 10 years, there's really no need to be um, obsessing or um, fighting over such things. I like that um, advice. I also like the advice that the other guy said about his friend telling him to set standards for himself, that if he doesn't set standards for himself, um, nobody's going to set standards for him. That advice kind of resonated with me because a lot of times I sell myself short. I don't think that great things are supposed to happen to me or I don't think I'm worthy of great things. I think I'm worthy of good things, but great things, I, I really don't. I really don't allow myself to try and dream because I feel like it's never going to happen. Um, so I think I need to change that mindset. But I just love the way the guy said it. Hopefully, I would remind myself that I'm worthy of great things. But um, I need to set standards for myself. I understand that. Now, for the particular thing that someone said to me um, years ago, that was when I was in university, um that has stuck with me till now um i remember it regularly especially when i look at myself in the mirror or on camera um uh, there was a particular day we were waiting for lectures we were outside the classroom i think another level was using the classroom and we were outside we were waiting for our class and this particular guy said that why do i look ugly some days and then i look cute some days and um don't think I responded to what he said. And because, like I said in some of my videos, I've always had this low self esteem about my image. I was just like shocked. And um, I think of it regularly, especially in the last six years, seven years that I've been really battling the worst acne breakouts I've ever had. Like previously, I would have just small breakouts and it would be controlled after a while. But the last seven years, it has been the worst time for my face. Like I don't even recognize my face sometimes. And most times when I look at my face like that, I feel a particular kind of way. And I just remember that statement that that person made. 
and when I look up at my face, um, especially with the breakouts I've been having over the past six years, I'm just thankful that I'm having this breakout when I'm not in university. When I've graduated out of university a long time ago, because during my uni years, um, I used to get comments about my acne, comments about my oily face. Um, I remember the time when I had acne on my nose and I think that was the first time I was having acne on my nose. I usually have it everywhere, as you can see. Um, but I, that was the first time I had a really like big acne on my nose. And I remember being teased because I had that acne on my nose. And nowadays, any time that I have acne on my nose, I remember that person um, teasing me because I have the acne. The person was teasing, was laughing. Um, so I I don't know I I just that those comments the um, reaction has stuck with me for years. It's, I remember it almost every month, especially because I'm still breaking out. Um, even at my age, I'm still breaking out every time, and um, I don't know what to do. Um, but that's the thing of why do you look ugly some days and why do you look cute some days I stuck with me till now I don't think the person thought about how that statement was the person just felt it was just saying something and that I, it will not really affect me in a particular kind of way but this kind of statement about my acne looks and the rest I think has contributed in a way to how I see myself and um, I'm trying, I'm trying not to allow it to um, control the way I see myself, but uh, once in a while, those thoughts pop up. But anyway, Trey, that is my own story. Um, um, it's been years, but like I said, I still remember it, especially when I look at my face in the mirror or on camera. But I don't know. Uh, I've, I've decided not to allow it to control the way I feel, not to bring me down, but I still think about it. Anyway, Trey, that is my own story. I would love to hear your own story. So please leave your comment in the comment section and share what is that thing that someone said to you, good or bad, that has stuck with you till now and you think will continue to stick with you for years. I would love to read it. So please leave your comment in the comment section so that we can get this discussion popping. Now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are not yet subscribed and you like videos such as this, please consider subscribing by clicking on the red button that says subscribe. And don't forget to click on the bell notification icon by the side so that you're notified every time I upload videos. Now, with what I said, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.